But let me give you some mathematics. I think these mathematics are staggering. It makes me realize the reality of God and His Word. So let me give you the mathematics if I can. What we've been seeing in all these uh, statements is <clears throat> that the evolutionist said, says that man developed from the one-celled protozoan, the first living cell. A molecule that had life and had ability to replicate itself to produce others like itself. That's what replicate means. Okay. So they say there was a primordial soup and it was five billion years ago. And all the components for life were in that soup. And by random process, process, elements combined to produce life. That really is the evolutionist view of how life began. Here's the problem. A long chain of amino acids m must be present for life to exist. They are not found in water. Well, maybe the soup wasn't made of water. When oxygen is present, such elements cannot combine. So was there no oxygen? But no oxygen means no protection from the ultraviolet rays of the sun and life could not exist. Life would die. How on earth did the first creature ever get started? It couldn't have been according to that. Now, the necessary ingredients were not in the soup. That's the problem. Uh, but that isn't the ma major problem. The major problem is, and I think Dr. Yi will follow me in this because he knows all this, the ingredients must combine. But they must combine according to an exact formula in a unique way. What if there are two components? I'm, I'm going to, because I, I have to look at it simply, I, I'm going to start with two components. And this has been done many times, and I've heard this done many times. Start with two components. And these two components must combine to make what we want. We'll just call it that, two components. So call the components X and Y. And how you want them to combine is to make XY. In other words, they could combine to make YX, and that would be no good. So they, they have to combine in such a way as to make X, Y. That's only two components. What if there are three components? Now, do you know what exponential means? That's what we're going to get into. <laughs> exponential mathematics. Okay. Supposing there are three components, and you call them X, Y, Z. Please notice that I said Z, and not Z. So there could be six possible combinations of X, Y, Z. You, and I'm going to do this because I think this will help maybe some of our young people. You could have X, Y, Z. You could have X, Z, Y. You could have Y, X, Z. You could have Y, Z, X. You could have Z, X, Y. You could have Z, Y, X. You could have six combinations. Only one of them is correct and six are wrong. Okay? So they, if, you, if they were combining by chance, if they were combining by their own volition, by, by some mechanism within themselves, they, they, they would maybe have to try all six combinations until they got the right one. Fine, that's, that's our problem. What if there are ten components? components? Not three, but ten. That hasn't gone up very much, has it, from three to ten? Ten components to combine correctly. You know what the probability is of them combining correctly? It is one in three million six hundred and twenty-eight thousand eight hundred for ten component components to combine correctly. One chance. That's the odds. One chance in three and a half million attempts. What if there are eleven components? I've only gone up one now. Started with two, went to six, went to ten, now we're only at eleven. Eleven components there would only be one chance in 39,916,800 that they could combine correctly. 
But the living molecules in your body that have protein, enzymes, DNA programming in them, the very simplest is made up of many hundreds of components. And, and, and really the simplest living cell that can replicate itself has 400 components. Now, now do you see where we've gone? Now we're completely out of my realm. So 100 components would have one chance in 100 million, billion, 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 billion chances of being correct. And it all happened by chance. No wonder they, no wonder they want so many millions of years for it to happen. But, but maybe give them, the, give them the millions of years for a basic uh, protein molecule. And, and, and maybe let's go back a bit. Rather than 400 components, let's go back to 100. But you see, the 100 components uh, actually also have four chemical elements in each one. <laughs> So now we've got 4 times 400, which is 1,600. So we've got 1,600 components, and that would be, well, 1 in 167,636 zeros following. That would be the odds against such a right combination. And wait a minute. Oh, you say, but that's a very rare thing, those kind of those cells with those components. Do you know what, my dear brother and sister? You have a brain with 10 billion components. How did it happen? By chance? <laughs> by time? Or by God? That's the simple story. In fact, it has been estimated that the time that to make all those choices of the combination of those enzymes and protein, etc. Do you know, let me stop for a minute on DNA. Look at your hand. There are living cells there. If you took one of those cells off your hand, that hand, that one cell, from your hand, from your skin even, has the DNA program for the color of your eyes, the height of your stature, the length of your feet, and every other character of your person. Who made it? God. That make us stand in awe. Think of what God has done. This is his creation. And puny man lifts his feeble little fist against the Almighty and defies God. <laughs>